Okay, so let me introduce you guys to Jordan Stubbings. Okay, um, Jordan is probably one of my all time favorite kids um, that I've ever had at Legend. Um, when you talk about maturity at a young age, when you talk about professionalism at a young age, um, when I when I was talking to him the other day, a flood of memories came through my mind um, about his success, you know, personally, but I think he was a big reason. Um, and Jordan, I want you to talk about your team's success at Legend, but why his teams were successful. Um, when you talk about, you know, and you guys all know I'm going to be the athletic director. One of the things that I am really going to push our athletes on is how are you a leader and breaking the selfishness of your club coaches and your club crap. And I hate your clubs. I hate your club coaches. If you pay me $5,000 a year, I'll tell you you're amazing and you're the man. Okay. I'll tell you the truth because you don't pay me anything. And we got to break that. And if everyone was a teammate like Jordan Stubbings, we would be winning a lot more championships than we do at this school. Okay. Because he's the most unselfish. Again, like Derek. He was the best baseball player um, at the school, but he was humble. He never acted like that. And I always appreciated how he treated adults. Um, we were talking yesterday. My son, when he was, I don't know, five years old, he wanted to go to a legend baseball game. And after the game, Jordan pulled him down. And, you know, there's this huge, huge victory at game day, double angel field. And Jordan puts him on his shoulders throws on a picture, um, you know, and these pictures come up in our Facebook memories and things like that. And uh, Nicholas's brother, Matthew, um, is number eight because guess who was number eight at Legend in high school? Jordan Stubbings, okay? So he just, um, when you talk about being a role model to younger kids, and my, my athletic journey was based on admiring high school athletes. I don't think you guys realize the impact you can have on younger athletes. Okay, so with that being said, Jordan is at Mesa State College. That is a division two school. Some of us went on the ski trip. We visited Mesa State. They have a beautiful out, Mesa. Oh, sorry, yep, I'm old. I'm old, hey, when I when Fort Lewis played there, when I was there, yeah. it was Mesa State. Yeah, no, it, sorry. It, it changed in like 2010 or something like that. Yep, yep, I'm that old, okay. So anyways, um, has had great success there was the RMAC. RMAC is uh, one of those conferences I told each of you to look up in terms of schools that actually recruit you in Colorado. He was the freshman of the year. He's been an all-conference player. He's finishing up his last season. His uh, Colorado Mesa um, goes against University of Colorado, Colorado Springs uh, Friday, right? Tonight. Friday. Tonight. I and play. It, little, most of you probably know my brother as well. He plays for uh, UCCS, and he's having a hell of a year this year too. So, they yeah, play. he get, plays his little brother tonight. Get to send him home. Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. All right. So with all that being said, love Jordo. Thank you for taking the time, Jordo. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to you to impart your knowledge on these kids. Um, but can you just kind of start? Tell us about your athletic journey. Um, you know, you kind of grew up as a Parker, maybe Elizabeth kid. I don't know. You're out there in the East somewhere. Uh -huh. Yeah. So basically I started playing baseball probably when I was four years old. Um, and I just fell in love instantly with the game. I, but then I, I, I always, when I was younger, I played so many sports, played football growing up until like my sophomore year of high school or something like that. Played basketball as well. Dan actually coached me for a year. That was nice. Um, but yeah, no, um, I was always in sports and I, I always just wanted to be active and be out just like you guys. All you guys are probably the same way as me. Um, so basically I started off playing a lot of baseball. I, I became pretty good at it. I started playing up age group or so when I was like eight or something, I played with uh, Bo Weiss and a bunch of other guys who Bo Weiss and Walt Weiss's son he used to be the head coach of the Rockies. So I got to be with a, I got a lot of knowledge when I was younger. And the biggest thing that I've learned from Walt Weiss as him being a head coach of the Rockies, he always says, you know, the little moments, the moments that you're going to remember the most, you're never going to remember what you did in high school in a certain game, but you're going to remember all the memories you have with all these teammates. 
So personally, I tried to make every single moment that I had at Legend or playing club ball or something like that as memorable as, as memorable as I could to, you know, have those memories as I go. And I, this is my last year of uh, college this year, and I've been to the national championship. I played and started the national championship game for Mesa two years ago. Unfortunately, we lost, but, uh, you know, we took the second in the nation. But I don't remember my at-bats in that game. I remember all the guys that we lost from that team. Those guys were the be- some of the best leaders I've ever seen in my life. And Dan was so nice to me to say that I was a great leader at Legend. But what those guys instilled in me was a brotherhood. And just like the girls and boys in your class right now, brotherhood is and sisterhood is everything. You have the best friends in your world are your teammates. You do everything with each other. You go go to practice, you go to school, you do everything with each other, each other. And I would always tell you to just think of those times and be happy about those times because those are the best times you're ever going to get. And you look back at everything from my age now, I don't look back at the successes I had at Legend. And I, I had a good amount of success at Legend, but I look back at the guys I played with and I, I still have relationships with those guys. Now, they're not as close as I used to be, but when those guys think back and look at me, they're always going to be like, that guy gave it everything he had. He was always the nicest guy ever to me, and he treated everybody with respect. And that's the one thing that I want everybody else to hear. I mean, <clears throat> we have a football player in the class, right? Raise well, your hand. hand. Yeah, you're, you guys football players? Yeah, you guys have been really good, really, really good lately. And when I was there, we didn't win a single game against Shap. Four years in a row, didn't win a single game against Shap. So – just be thankful for the opportunities that you guys have now. You guys are playing in state semifinal games. That that never be in a dream for some legend teams when I was there. So just be thankful for where you're at before you start thinking you're the crap and everything like that. So I would say overall, just think about who you're playing with and how they affect your life every single day. Not your own personal statistics because personal statistics will come and go. If you start playing for the team, you're going to be a stud anyway. If you don't play for the team, you're not going to be that good. Don't be selfish, basically. So <clears throat> that's basically where I start up from. I, my last year here at Mesa, just trying to finish it out, go win a national championship that we've never won. We're currently ranked number two in the nation right now. And we have the player of the year on my team as well. It's this big six foot five donkey from Arizona. But yeah, man, the, the talent and uh, trust me, I, I know what you guys all think. All of you guys are like, hey, it's D1 or bust, you know, and trust me, I had a bunch of D1 offers coming out of high school, but I chose to go D2 for a reason. Yeah, I mean, you get to play right away and up here at Mesa, I don't have to pay a dime for tuition. I don't have to pay anything. And that has really, really helped my family and helped me personally, actually, because I get to spend my money on stuff that I actually need here at Mesa. I don't need to go out and spend money on anything else because if I would have taken an offer, let's say I, I had an offer from University of Arizona and I could have went there, but I would have had to sit for two years and it would have been awesome to go there. But at the same time, it's $60,000 a year to go to U of A and the scholarship you get as a baseball player isn't that much. So just think about those small things too, when you, especially when you're thinking about going to college level. If you want to play college sports, you can play it. Anybody can play it. It's not, um, it's not a matter of how – it. there is a part of it, but I, I know guys that I played with in high school at Legend that, you know, weren't, weren't the best baseball players, but they still got to play college baseball because there's a place for everybody. If you truly want to play a college athletic sport – you can play. Uh, there's NAIs, there's JUCOs, there's, there's so many teams. They're just looking for, uh, for people to fill the spots. I mean, women athletics too, you know, there's probably over 600, uh, 600 scholarships a year that go unused in women athletics because some, some girls just don't want to go play college sports, which is fine. Uh, but you guys, you guys have just as much talent as anybody else. I mean, uh, we, we have our softball team up here. And they're un freaking believable, but they just lost in the Armac. But they they lost five games all year, five games all year. They they were forty nine and five, just studs. 
but then uh, we also, we have a, here at Mesa, we have a beach volleyball team. We have a, our volleyball girls play on the beach team in the uh, uh, spring. Why are you going for that? <laughs> What'd you say? I got two volleyball players I'm looking at that what they should be beach volleyball players. Forget being indoors. Let's go yeah. play at the beach. Well, most schools are turning to the point where they make their indoor girls play outside as well. But our beach volleyball team just won the national championship. So, yeah. But I don't know, Dan, What is there anything else you want me to cover? Yeah. So, Jordo, I think, that, you know, there's like always this thing like, oh, yeah, I got to get a full ride scholarship. You know, and I guess in my mind, you know, Pac-12 schools, ACC schools, SEC schools, those are the ones in football that are offering full ride scholarships, maybe some of them in basketball, but maybe you can talk through like the reality of, you know, especially some of the smaller sports or division two, you know, the importance of combining the athletic scholarship with the academic side. You know, just what's the reality of scholarships? Because even Division One baseball, you know, aren't really handing out full ride scholarships. Yeah, no, uh, Division One baseball, you, you probably have 60, 60 players or so on a baseball team at a college level. In Division One baseball, they're only allowed 11 and a half scholarships for the entire team. So there's not one single player on a full scholarship. Um, at D2, where I play, I'm lucky we have a full, we're fully invested down here, but we only get nine scholarships for 50 players. So we, our entire team, I mean, we have guys that are going to get, that have gone drafted. We have guys that are in the major leagues right now that we're here on just 50%. And it's okay, but you have to realize when you are going to school and when you, some of you are sophomore, sophomores and freshmen right now, or who's older than that? Yeah, we got uh, two juniors. Everyone else is a freshman or a sophomore. Okay, yeah. When you start realizing you, you're going to college and everything like that and you're trying to play college athletics, it gets a lot more serious money-wise. I mean, you have to have those conversations with your parents. Some parents can pay things. Some parents can't. And um, it, it's a big deal because if you're trying to go to a D1 school, sometimes they're like, oh, we like you, and they just think of you as a piece of property. And they're like, oh, we'll just give you a preferred walk-on, you know? I know a lot of football guys that did this. And they go do a preferred work walk-on, and some of them get to the point where they get a scholarship. But meanwhile, they're getting into debt. Uh, they have to take loans out for the entire time. And, I mean, you guys have probably all heard this. I mean, when I was younger, everybody would used to tell me, hey, it, wait, until, yeah. wait until you get to college. It's insane. Hold away. Sorry, Jordo. Go, okay. Go I just got a quick interruption. Go ahead. Keep going. You're doing great. Okay. Uh, when you get to the college level, you just <clears throat> it's really hard because you you do, you don't know anybody else's money for one too because you you guys all are on one team. No one talks about the money that they're on. That unless you get some guys, you you know the preferred walk-ons and everything like that because they're here and they're they're fighting harder than anybody else. But you have to step back and look at it from the standpoint of what your family can do and can't do. You got to step back from the standpoint of what you want. Do you want to go to a D1 and then have to transfer out because you don't get your opportunities? You know, you have to be, you have to be honest with yourself and it, it sucks. I, I wish I could have gone to LSU or these big time SEC schools and I could have, but I would have to walk on and I, and I don't want to put my family in that situation. So what I did was I found the best situation that fits me. I, if for one, you have to love the school that you go to to be there for all four years. Unless you go to a JUCO, then you can be there for two years and then transfer out of there. But you have to love the school because it, you have to take through your mind. You have to understand that if you are there and let's say you get cut or something happens, you, you get a massive injury and you don't like the school you're at, you're not going to be happy. And that sucks. You know, you, you, you need to go to the school that fits you as a person most. And if you get to play sports there, that's cherry on top. And I mean, you, you can go to anywhere and play sports, but you have to like where you're going. You have, it has to be something that you want. You can't, you can't just be like, Oh yeah, I got this scholarship from this school. And like, uh, I like it because I got the scholarship, but you know, I, I don't I don't know about the school. I don't know about the place. If you don't love it, don't go. 
That's what I would say. Good advice. Good advice. Okay, right. so how do these young guys get recruited, Jordo? How do you get recruited? What's your advice <laughs> on that? It's really hard. It really is, especially being Colorado kids. We all know it, especially baseball players in there. You know how good others, uh, other cities and other states are. Uh, if you're not from California, Texas, or Arizona, or Florida, or Georgia, you don't get recruited that well. Um, now, if you're a pitcher in Colorado, you're going to be really easy to get anywhere you want to go because pitching in Colorado is really hard. And if you throw hard, you're going to be fine. But basically what I would say to earn a scholarship, you just have to be in the right in front of the right people at the right time. It's I, I didn't, I went to all these camps. I went to everything. I, um, I think it was a big waste of money. Um, if you want to be recruited and you want to be like the bit, best thing that I found I email coaches, DM coaches, even if you, I mean, social media is a big platform right now. We just picked up a guy that was throwing 97 because he, and he posted it on Twitter. Guess what? He's on my team now. Huh. You know, <laughs> it's insane. I, I would post your highlights on Twitter for sure. But at the same time, be humble about where you're, wh what you're doing. Cause if you put your highlights out there and think you're the bee's knees, man, it, there's going to be some coaches that don't want to even look in you, man. So from a, from a standpoint of women and men's sports, I would go out there and I would look at the schools that I want to go to that I have interest in make it known that you have interest in those schools to those coaches. And if, when you have the coaches knowing what you're doing and everything like that, know your stats send some videos, if you need to, or anything like that, they'll come out and visit you. Most of them will do that because most coaches now they have, they're too busy to be traveling clear across the country. So if you just sit, if you DM them and email them and everything like that and show them what you're doing and stuff, that's the, probably the best way. I also would say um, lean into your coaches at the school, lean into people that uh, have been places, lean into, I mean, I mean, I know Dan hates club baseball, but it's the best way, best tool I think to get, get picked up I got picked up from from playing club baseball but it wasn't by spending the money that everybody thinks they need to spend it's about just playing playing just play baseball or play play your sport being the places and like just have fun man I when I got recruited I think when Mesa saw me for the first time I went 0 for 4 with a K and two fly outs and a ground out I mean that that's nothing that sucks right Anybody says that, that sucks. No, they, they recruited me off of that game. Huh. And they recruited me because of the way I played the game, the way that I led the team, and the way that <clears throat> I was respected by the other team. When, if you let your play define the way that you have fun out there and everything, like, if you let your attitude out on the field and just have fun and smile and, and play your game, you're going to be recruited that much easier. Good, great advice, Jordo. I don't hate club baseball. I love, I run clubs. You know that. I just oh, I know hate that. Uh, clubs run by dads who don't know what they're doing. Exactly. That's what I hate. And they're just collecting money and they don't know how to coach. That's what I hate. That's my biggest thing too. Yeah. If it's done the right way and by a good coach, it is a great opportunity for these kids. Yeah, exactly. They're, there's plenty of opportunities everywhere. There's, I mean, there's also like camps that you can go to at, at college campuses, but I know this from, from a lot of people, a lot of camps are just money grabbers for the schools. So if you go to the camp there, yeah, they'll see you and they'll be a little bit interested, but it, it's, it's hard because as a Colorado athlete, it's really hard to get re recruited to places. That's a good and point. Can, yeah. A lot of those camps are, they do them to pay, assistant coaches a little more money mm -hmm. and get you. they, they are great things for some people but it's yeah. kind of hard what'd you say no you're right you're right questions for jordo things you guys are wondering elijah uh what are some biggest adversity that you deal with in high school and like how did you deal with them biggest adversity you faced in high school and how'd you deal with it how'd you overcome it um it was probably my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, 
I made varsity my freshman year in high school for baseball. And um, I played with guys that were getting drafted that year. And they, uh, they, they really made it known that I was not welcome on the team. Um, it was really, really hard. I think Dan and I talked about this the other day. Um, it, it really made me not like the game. It made me hate where I was at and be like, oh, well, why'd I come here? Because I, I mean, I live out in Elizabeth, Colorado, and I open enrolled into the school system just to get into legend. So I was thankful for just the opportunity of being there. But once I got into the system, I could have gotten to any other school. So like when I got there, I was like, really, man, like this, this sucks. Cause like these guys were just being douches to me, man. It, it made my entire time, those two years, not the best. Like I played really well my freshman year and, uh, but my sophomore year, man, I, those guys let me have it <laughs> and it's okay. Cause I learned a lot. I learned how not to be a leader, you know, and when, when you learn from other people about bad leadership is because they're doing bad leadership, you know? So that's what, that was the hardest thing I had to deal with, but it, it made me into the person I am today. You know, don't, don't ever think that a hard time is going to be forever for sure. I, I've been through a bunch of hard times. I've been through some of the hardest times in college and I've still been one of the best players at my college still. So it, it, there, there are some tough times, but if you can be a great teammate, just know that other people go through tough times all the time. And if you can be that teammate that somebody can rely on and be that leader, then you're going to make people's lives, man. I, I hope you guys are all hearing that because I think a lot of you have experienced jerk older teammates and you need to think about how you want to be perceived by younger teammates because you guys are going to become juniors and seniors here pretty soon. And I'm telling you right now, like this guy was unbelievable. We did a college tour one year, not this year, but before. And uh, McCormick and I just went to the baseball field to see if we could find Jordo and Brody, who's on it, his buddy. Um, and all of a sudden, you just hear this guy cheering. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's Jordo. And we come around the corner. Here he is, a college athlete, like hyping up his teammates, things like that, you know. And uh, I just remember how how good a care you took of those younger kids on your team, and how you made them feel part of a team, not jealous that they were freshmen on the team or anything like that, but they yeah. were your teammates. Well, I would say uh, for the older guys in the room, just know that those guys, when you leave, are taking over the program. So it doesn't mean anything what you're doing right now because what you're doing is you want to, I mean, I was big into pride about my school and everything like that. I wanted to leave it better than I found it. That's my whole, that was my whole philosophy. If you can do that as a football player, you can do that as a volleyball player. You can do it as a basketball player. You can do it as anybody. Your whole goal should be, I want to leave this program better than I found it. And to be able to take those freshmen that are coming up because I'm doing the same thing here. We have a bunch of young players. And what you want to do is you want to make sure those guys will be able to succeed when you're done. And that, that's the biggest thing I would say is, and guess what? The guys that did that to me when I was younger, when I was a freshman here, I'm in their weddings now. Like I, I we, that's it, just how life works, man. Like, I, I mean, I just recently got engaged and all my buddies, these young guys are all going to be in my wedding. So like it, it is crazy the way that life moves and it, and at the end of the day, you are at your college to play sports, but it, it's about the teammates that you have. And it's about the teammates that you guys have right now. Those young guys look up to you guys no matter what. They do. It's it's insane. I mean, I I think of the kids. There's a kid here at Mesa um, who went to Legend and everything like that, and he always told me the reason why he plays the way he does is because of the way – that I treated him and how I made him feel, uh, feel as a player. I did, I, my senior year at Mesa, not at Mesa, at Legend, we had four or five seniors, but we had four sophomores that started on our varsity team and we lost in the state semifinal game. Um, but it was because of those sophomores that we did well. And if us as a senior group didn't accept those guys into the group, we wouldn't have done well at all and usually freshmen get and sophomores get destroyed by upperclassmen but it's it's a pride thing you gotta put your pride aside you get you gotta have fun and you gotta make sure that those guys know that 
<clears throat> without them, the team is nothing. They're a very important piece of the team, even if they're not playing. So that's what I was about to say. I mean, if you want to have success in high school, you can have personal self accolades and everything like that. But if you want to win and you want to win a lot, you got to make sure you're a good teammate. Yes. Yeah. Preach it, Jordo. Um, so, Jordo, I, I, I can listen to you talk all day, buddy, but we have got to get to our next class here in a couple minutes. Yeah. So I just want to turn it over to these guys. I don't know that I have time for questions, but I want you guys to just words of gratitude, something that resonated with you. Yeah, go ahead, Maya. Um, I thought it was cool that you were talking about, like, you have to really love the place that you like, want to play at. It's like find a college that you actually enjoy, even if it's not like a really big school, because like you're going to have to live there. Like your life's going to be there. And it's not mm -hmm. like, I'm going to play here because it's a big name school. Like, you have to go somewhere that you really enjoy and like, truly care about. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, We're really right. Jaden. Um, so, I just want to thank you for like talking to us and stuff. But my like takeaway from this was uh, like the attitude part of like having fun on the court and not having your play like determine how if you're having fun or not. Because, I mean, I have a couple of teammates in here. Sometimes I get really pissed and like yell at them, which like affects my game and everyone else's game. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to take that, uh, take that and like work on myself and make myself a better teammate player. Awesome reflection. Kale. Uh, what inspired me was that that you thought about yourself or that you didn't think about yourself but the others around you, whether it was your family or your friends. Like you had the opportunity to go D1, but you chose to go D2 just because of your family. And um, you were talking about how, like, the younger guys on your team, you really brought them in and uh, uh, pushed them to be better. And I, I would just add to that what I want all of you guys to think about. You know what I'm tired of doing is walking into your classes and you all are sitting next to each other in every class. And I think about this. How are you a good teammate in our program to your classmates? Okay. I want you to reflect on that. I had a freshman student yesterday tell me he's thinking about leaving the program. Not because of anything, not because of me, not because of anyone else leaving or anything like that. Because he feel like he hasn't made very many friends here. How sad is that? What's your leadership in your classes? Last one for Jordo. Anyone else? I saw a lot of hands. Yeah, thanks, Paige. Um, I feel like it was really nice for me to like take a step back and like reflect on like I'm not always gonna love my sport, especially like going from high school to back to club. Like I really just I'm like I'm done. Like I don't want to do this anymore. But I'm like pushing through just because I want to do good things. So. Awesome. Good reflection, Paige. Aislinn. Yeah. Um, I just like the teammate aspect that you said to like lift up the younger kids that are coming in because last year um, me and my teammates were definitely scared or nervous coming in and intimidated by all those upperclassmen but they were super loving and invited us in and it kind of brought up our confidence to play and I, I just think that's a super important part that I need to execute too. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and I know it's super cliche, but nobody's bigger than the team. The team can't win without the team. There's no I in it, seriously. And I know everybody goes, oh, well, you, you guys won't figure it out until you get to college. No, you, you can figure it out. College athletics is so hard. It really is. But the, the reason why you do it is because of the love of the game and the love of the teammates. I mean, the first day, if you do go play college sports, the first day you show up on campus, you have – 55 new best friends, seriously. And because, I mean, you go and your, your teammates are who you hang out with. That's who you hang out with the whole time. And, we, yeah, of course you hang out with other uh, other sports and everything like that. So at the end of the day, I would just say, hey, guys, thanks for letting me talk. And um, just love where you're at. Be where you're at. Be where your feet are at. Enjoy these times now. When I'm looking back at high school, I had so much fun. But it's because I got to enjoy the time I was there. Enjoy what you're doing now. This is my fifth year of college. I'm probably done with baseball. I could have been drafted, and I still can. But my goals in life have changed from making my sport my everything and making relationships my everything. That it's Everything is about relationships. And if you don't have a good relationship with everybody else, you're going to think back on your time at Legend and be like, 
damn man i that was a tough time you know but if you have good relationships there and you you be where your feet are you're gonna have a lot of fun and you're gonna win a lot of games and you're gonna get recruited because you know what when your team is good scouts show up when the good team is winning scouts show up oh you guys preach it jordo Hey, he is okay. down the best teammate I've ever coached in my life. You never had to go to him. He just did it. And that's just who he is. Honestly, the best kid I've ever coached right here. And, <laughs> and you know that. Okay, Jordo, I'm sorry to cut you off, buddy, but love you. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.